Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 156th episode of Weekly Poker Hand, and today we have a fun one. So here I open it up to 2.5 big blinds from second position with pocket sevens. I think this is perfectly fine, perfectly standard. As you can see, we're playing about 80-ish big blinds deep, effective. Um, I make it 3,000 at 600, 1,200, and I'd be doing this with my whole playable range. I'm not limping anything, I'm not making it bigger with anything. I'm just making it 2.5 big blinds with the whole playable range. I might fold the smallest pairs here, like twos, threes, fours, maybe fives. But uh, the bigger pairs and medium pairs, you definitely want to open. So I raise loose aggressive guy calls in the low jack seat and the big blind a tight aggressive guy calls. Flop comes ace, king, jack. Two spades. I have seven of hearts, seven of diamonds, so I just have nothing. And when you have nothing, it's fine to check fold. Do not think that you must fire a continuation bet just because the board should be good for your range. And clearly, when I'm opening from second position, I'm going to have all of the good big cards, all the good, well, all the, all the really good big offsuit cards, all the good suited cards, and then some medium pairs and some suited connectors. And the only time I miss this board is when I have a smaller medium pair or a suited connector. And even then, I hand like 10-9 as a gut shot, right? So I'm going to be hitting this board a huge percentage of the time, so that's a good reason to bet with everything because I just don't have very many bluffs. So you want to take whatever potential bluffing hands you have and you could put them in your range. However, this board also connects very well with both of my opponent's ranges. While they don't have pocket aces or pocket kings very often, they have plenty of ace jack, maybe queen 10 suited, maybe queen 10 offsuit for all I know, king jacks. You know, they could have all sorts of good hands on ace king jack and they're just not going to fold that often. So when your opponents aren't going to fold, there is no reason to make a bet when you have a hand that has relatively little equity. And if we do continuation bet this, for whatever reason, I think the plan just has to be to triple barrel very often because, like I said, we should not have very many bluffs. And because of that, we whatever bluffs we have, we should play them kind of like we have aces. So uh, that's, that's not what I'm trying to do early in a tournament very often at all. And I would check here legitimately 100% of the time. So check, check, check on the flop. Turns a seven, so we have a set, uh, set now. So seven of clubs, so it puts up a backdoor flush draw. And now the big blind leads for 2,000 into the 11,400 pots. So when someone bets this small, very often it's some sort of marginal made hand that's trying to get some protection or just make their opponents fold out stuff. Or it is um, some sort of a weird strong hand like Queen-10 that's just begging to get action. And... Given that range, quite often I think it makes sense to just call. But given the board is so draw heavy, I think our opponent may do this with a lot of various draws, like 10-9 of spades, right? That would be a, a pretty fine hand to bet. The thing is, is it doesn't make a lot of sense to bet 2,000 here or very much at all, besides like a, a hand like king-queen maybe, or queen-jack, or maybe jack-10. Like you're, He's trying to bet 2,000, I would assume, to try to get called by a lot of absolute garbage. But that's not really a great play. Um, so anyway, if that's the range, I guess I should go ahead and raise, because if I do call, my opponent's effectively giving himself, you know, seven, about eight to one if I call, which is not really that bad if he has a hand like jack 10 and I'm sitting here with, let's say, ace nine and I check behind on the flop, right? So I think we do need to raise. Obviously, when he, have, when he has this beat, we're going to lose a bunch of money and we're probably going to double the guy up, but I think that's okay. It's a tough spot. If I raise, let's say, 8,000 or 10,000, and he re-raises, I'm, I'm certainly not loving it. It would definitely be a tough spot. But I think we need to raise, because we can get called by hands like King-Queen. We can get called by hands like Ace-10 if he's doing this. The thing is, is, it's hard to nail down what this guy's doing this with. And, you know, you can speculate, and I think a lot of amateur players over-speculate. They think, oh, this guy has exactly, I don't know, Jack-10, or exactly... 10 9 of spades, then they play accordingly. But your opponent is, is likely playing a small set of hands in this manner, but you don't know what small set of hands he's playing in this manner. So for that reason, you kind of just have to assume the guy's wearing is somewhat wide open, but perhaps weighted towards particular parts. And if I had to weight it towards particular parts here, it'd be something like a bad ace, king queen, king 10, maybe king 9, queen jack, jack 10, you know, just like a lot of marginal stuff. That's what I would tend to assume my opponent has. Um, that said, I don't know, so I'm going to make it 10,000. He made it two, I made it 10. Um, again, normally you want to make it about three times your opponent's bet. I've said this in quite a few weekly poker hands, but whenever your opponent bets very small or very large, you should 
make the sizing differently because really you're you're raising in proportion to the pot. You're not raising in proportion to your opponent's bet. So you'll see some amateur players in the spot. When your opponent bets 2,000 into the 12,000 pot, they'll make it 6,000. And then your opponent's just getting great odds to call, right? Here I make it 8,000 or 10,000, which is a full five times my opponent's bet, but really it's not even a, a pot size bet, right? So uh, I think this is good and, and fine. We can easily get called by a lot of that range I just gave my opponent. And may, he, he may just get stubborn with all sorts of stuff. So the river is the five of clubs. And if my opponent checked, I would certainly value bet. Even though the backdoor flush comes in, it's somewhat unlikely that my opponent has that. And I would not bet too big on the river because again, I'm trying to get called by ace something or king something. So I probably would have bet about 13,000 into the 30,000 pot. I think that would have been a pretty nice sizing because if my opponent does have a busted draw, he's always going to fold. If he has an ace or a king, he's probably going to call a small bet. And if he has a nut hand, which I think is very unlikely, he would call a bigger bet. But I, I think that is a part of my range. My opponent's range is quite small because if he did have queen 10, he'd probably just re-raise the turn, right? So anyway, Rivers is a five of clubs, but he leads into me now for half pot. So clearly we're not folding. Well, I say clearly. Maybe it's not so clear. If we think our opponent is a legitimate, weak, tight, straightforward player, if he has the nuts, he bets. If he doesn't, he checks. <laughs> I mean, there is a world where you can fold this. And again, I think a lot of players make too big of assumptions about their opponents. They think, yeah, this guy's tight. He hasn't really played very many hands. And that's been the case over the last four hours. But you really don't see him leading on the river when the backdoor flush comes in very often, right? I mean, for all we know, this guy could have ace five or king five and think that it's the nuts now and decide to lead. And if we fold a seven or pocket sevens whenever the guy's leading with ace five, clearly that's a disaster, right? Um, so getting three to one pot odds, we have to put in 15 to win a, well, it's going to be a total of 60 after we call. We need to win 25% of the time. We're going to win way more than 25% of the time here on average. Again, if this guy's only leading with flushes, we don't know it because we don't have a sample on the opponent. And um, I, I do think a lot of players will lead here, especially for this sizing, with a lot of hands like ace five, or maybe even a weird king seven, or a weird ace nine that doesn't want to check and have me bet 28,000 or something like that. So I think this is a pretty easy call. We are going to be beat sometimes, and that's okay. I think a lot of people get really unhappy when they lose pots, when they think they, you know, quote unquote, should win. And when you have a set, I think a lot of people feel entitled. And any feeling of entitlement you have in poker or in life you need to get that out of there because that's just going to lead to a lot of misery. Here, we're going to lose sometimes and we're going to win way more than 25% of the time. So I don't know exactly how often we're going to win or how often we're going to lose, but we have a pretty easy call. Oh, should we raise? I guess raising is the other question. If we raise, will the guy call us with a hand like ace five or king seven or something like that? And maybe he will, but if you tell me my opponent is a tight aggressive player and that's all I know, I'm not going to raise here because if I raise, he's never folding a flush or a straight, but he could very easily could fold out a hand like ace five or especially a hand like king queen that he decided to lead for no good reason. So I think we have a pretty easy call. If this was a cash game, like maybe there's some tiny bit of merit in raising, but even then I'm, when, when my opponents take somewhat bizarre lines and my opponent's line of check, 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 flop, bet the turn tiny, call my decently sized rays and then lead on the river when a, the obvious draw comes in. I mean, that's a pretty strong line, right? And when my opponent does that, if he does not have a very strong hand, he's probably going to fold to a raise. So there's no point in raising. So even though we do have a set, it is essentially a bluff catcher here. And we have to just call if the river was a blank, like a five of diamonds, my opponent led, I would almost certainly raise on that river though, because then we only, we do only lose to the queen 10. If I raise the river and my opponent re-raises, I can then fold. And he's he will then call my river raise with hands like ace five a lot of the time, I think. So um, when when either the flush draw comes in, either the flush draws come in, I'm just going to call and be okay with, with this pot. And we lost this time, and that's fine. Again, we lost a queen jack of clubs, so he had a pair and a flush draw on the turn and decided to lead very tiny with it, which is interesting. Um, we, I guess we were halfway, right? I said he's, he could have a lot of marginal made hands, but he actually had a marginal made hand with a draw. And he got there and he didn't even win very much money. When your opponents get there and they don't win very much money, it's not really the end of the world. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. Actually, one more thing. If he checked the river and I bet and he check raised me, I would have been very sick. Um, I would certainly bet the river, like I said. I would have bet 13000 on the river if he checked, for sure. 
And if he would have raised, I mean, I guess all in would have been the most obvious raise size. I don't know if I'm folding. <laughs> it's, it's a tough spot. I mean, for you, in order to fold here, you have to assume your opponent's just not bluffing very often at all. And also not capable of turning a hand like queen of clubs, jack of diamonds into a bluff. So I'm, there are certainly spots where I would fold and there are opponents I would fold against. But if you were to just tell me this is a generic spot from some generic tournament, I'm probably just going to find a call. But maybe that's a mistake against people who just don't bluff very often. And I think you're going to find that in tournaments, people do not bluff very often. It's not a bad... Like, like if there is a quote-unquote leak you want to have or a hole in your game, it probably is folding to river over-aggression. And right here, when this guy check-raises me on the river, is he ever bluffing? Probably not, so I guess I'm supposed to fold. <laughs> I'm talking myself into folding the more I, more I think about it. So anyway, that's what would have happened in that scenario. I know you all like me to extrapolate and talk about every possible way the hand could go, and I think we did it this time. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. If you enjoy this, definitely check out jonathanlittlepoker.com. There I have a lot of blogs, all of the past Weekly Poker Hands, and um, lots of other fun stuff. So check it out at jonathanlittlepoker.com. Thanks for being here today. And good luck in your games.